From creating Madonna's cone bra to pioneering inclusivity on the runway, Jean-Paul Gaultier defines the term trailblazer. His costume designer beginnings have shown up time and time again in his bold and fearless approach to couture and ready-to-wear. Even his iconic perfume bottles have transformed the public understanding of what style can mean. His couture collections continually rock the fashion world, his runway shows are heralded as standout historical events in some cases. And the impact he made at Hermes is still influencing collections today. Credited for having brought high fashion to the masses and introducing street style to the catwalk, Jean-Paul Gaultier has the rare and unmatched skill of combining the radical with the classic. For over four decades, Jean-Paul Gaultier's collections have been far from conventional, incorporating a wide range of influences from French cultural references to the London street scene. He has become renowned for his skirts for men and for transforming lingerie into outerwear, challenging traditional divisions between gender and fashion. He has been a change maker in every sense of the word. His focus on inclusivity has unified the industry and given a platform to those who felt invisible. Driven by his fascination for that which is different, Gautier has celebrated individualism and pushed personality to the forefront. He explored the possibilities of technology in fashion production long before his contemporaries and has remained committed to his provocative and alternative style. Gautier is a true design leader who has changed fashion. Born in France, he began his career at a very young age by designing costumes for theatre and eventually moved into designer ready-to-wear clothing. His signature style was characterized by its boldness and avant-garde nature, featuring unique silhouettes and materials and pushing the boundaries of high fashion. Gautier quickly gained notoriety for his creative use of unconventional materials, such as leather and metal, to create eye-catching pieces that pushed the limits of high fashion. He was also known for combining elements from different eras and cultures in his designs, which showcased his versatility and creativity. His runway presentations showcased his love for the theatrical, often featuring live music and models that at the time were most unlikely candidates for runway. He was one of the first high fashion designers to embrace real inclusivity, featuring both male and female models of all sizes and backgrounds. His commitment to this cause has been a major factor contributing to today's high fashion runways featuring more diverse models. Jean-Paul Gaultier continues to be an inspiration to the fashion industry, and his work stands as a testament to his creative vision and passion for pushing high fashion forward into new realms of possibility. Gautier grew up in a working-class family. His mother was a clerk, and his father was an accountant. From a young age, Jean-Paul was enthralled with the world of fashion and design. On weekends his grandmother taught him how to sew, which he used as an opportunity to craft garments for his beloved teddy bear, Nana, which he still owns. Gautier never attended fashion school or obtained formal training as a fashion designer, his approach is entirely intuitive self-teaching through practice and experimentation. From a young age, Gautier sent his sketches to renowned couturiers. At 18 years old, Pierre Cardin was so impressed by his work that he hired him as an assistant. Thus began the illustrious career of this ambitious designer. Throughout his career, Gautier has leaned into pushing boundaries, even when they caused controversy. Whilst some found his style to be too raunchy he followed his true creative north. During an era where conservative fashion was the norm, he frequently sent scantily clad models down the runway in daring defiance of social expectations. His runway shows were truly groundbreaking. Whilst not always well received by the public, he did win the admiration of fashion editors such as Melka Trintoneville and Claude Browett of Marie Claire. His perfect blend of refinement and provocation would soon become the Jean Paul Gaultier signature style. Gautier founded his eponymous fashion label in 1982, and his first collection boy toy was released shortly after in 1983. The collection proudly paid homage to Gautier's French roots through the iconic Marinière for men, which is known for its unique sailor aesthetic. This look was composed of distinct striped elements that have become a trademark style in his collections over time. From the very beginning, Jean-Paul Gaultier has aimed to challenge what is seen as acceptable for both men's and women's fashion. 1984 was a defining moment for Jean-Paul Gaultier. 
During his four London and Paris shows, he unveiled skirts, kilts to be specific, for men and the iconic cone bra which later became popularized by Madonna in 1990. The collection highlighted all that Gautier stands for, an alteration of style etiquette, gender fluidity, and disregarding cultural boundaries as well as fashion rules. Gautier drew his inspiration for skirts from Japanese samurai culture, Scottish kilts, and the Parisian garçons' traditional aprons. Sadly, displaying men in skirts was not well received, like so many of Gautier's most groundbreaking ideas at the time. Gautier is quoted as saying, I was slated by the French press for designing for hairdressers and homosexuals. It took them two years to accept my statement. Despite backlash, he remained focused on his artistry and continued to attract a loyal following of fashion lovers who appreciated his approach. Tragedy struck in 1990, when his boyfriend of 15 years, Francis Menuge, died of AIDS-related complications. This was his support and confidant, and many feel that losing him compelled Gautier to withdraw from public view and focus on building his brand. The 90s brought much freer attitudes towards the themes Gautier had been featuring in his collections, and so in came a season of broader acceptance and celebration of the Gautier ethos and aesthetic. And along with this change in tide, came an appointment of a lifetime. 1990 saw the third concert tour by Madonna supporting her fourth studio album, Like a Prayer. The 57 show tour began on April 13, 1990, in Chiba, Japan, and concluded on August 5, 1990, in Nice, France. Madonna was at the height of her career and one of the most talked about women in the world. After developing an admiration for Gautier's humorous and fun-loving approach to fashion, she penned a handwritten letter to the designer requesting that he design her tour costumes. In perfect synchrony, they crafted some remarkable moments which defied fashion trends and astonished the public. With her audacity to think unconventionally, Madonna was the ideal model and muse for Jean-Paul Gaultier's designs. Her fame catapulted Gaultier into the wider public consciousness, turning him into a household name. Madonna sporting this cone bra on tour is one of fashion's most iconic moments to date, and few items have as much allure and recognition. It also provides valuable insight into the creative mind of Gautier. That playful wild streak that has always set him apart in the industry. The iconic cone bra design was revolutionary for its time, it challenged and disrupted traditional standards of femininity. He referred to Madonna as a strong and masculine woman and wanted to represent this with the harshness of a pointed cone bra and boxy suiting. The exaggerated silhouette challenged how we define what is and isn't feminine. And the relationship between Madonna and Gautier didn't end there, they had become fast friends. In 1992 she walked topless in one of Gautier's shows and also appeared in a 1995 runway pushing a baby carriage and wearing a fantasy-inspired gown. And the 90s continued to bring more notoriety for the designer. His couture shows became critic favorites, and accolades followed. It was in 1993 that the designer decided to launch his fragrance line, which would capitalize on his growing brand recognition while expanding his reach to all types of consumers. A night couture outfit is most definitely inaccessible for most of us, but almost anyone can indulge in fragrance. And so this was Gautier's plan to distill his couture brand essence into fragrances that more people can enjoy. Starting with his very first fragrance, Classique. The body-shaped bottles and tin can style packaging have become popular cultural icons in their own right. Jean-Paul Gaultier's 1995 Cyber Couture Show is hands down one of the most revered shows in fashion history. Vogue has even produced a video explaining why it's one of the best. Gautier was an early adopter of technology and recognized its potential to revolutionize fashion. He presented his full 1995 cyber collection, long before the Y2K hype started. One of the standout looks from the collection was the dot-printed body suits designed on a computer with color gradients that suggestively outlined the figure of a woman in underwear. This print was an evolution of Gautier's iconic tattoo body suits and has since returned becoming one of the hottest items being seen on the backs of celebrities and influential figures worldwide. The show is often described as his Mad Max show. The designer told Vogue that it was a collection for an Amazonian woman who is courageous, 
confident, and very much in control of her life. This show featured a notably diverse cast, a range of races, genders, and ages were present. Once again demonstrating Gautier's commitment to inclusivity and seeing beauty in everyone. Gautier believed in inviting elements of street style into couture. Vogue labels this as trickle-up, vernacular fashion. Where the style of everyday people influences fashion houses and the industry instead of the other way around. Gautier reimagined the possibilities of everyday materials, denim and mesh being prime examples. His castings were always progressive and diverse in terms of age, ethnicity, and size, but also often featured ordinary people. For his couture debut in 1997, he revisited Androgyny, one of his design signatures. He featured unisex couture pieces, which at the time was unheard of. Corsets for both men and women. And very surprisingly, denim, shower shoes, visible garment tags, and logos. All elements usually found strictly in ready-to-wear items. Gautier was determined to define high fashion in his own terms. Despite embracing modernity, the designer still paid homage to tradition. Delicate pieces of white tulle and a black shawl. An ethereal ensemble featuring rainbow feathers, which truly brought Gautier's couture fantasies to life by merging human and animal worlds together in one garment. He approached everything with a twist merging the old and the new. In 1999, the innovative French designer parted with 35% of his company and sold it to Hermes. In just four years, he was appointed creative director. When Gautier presented his first runway show for Hermes in fall 2004, it diverged dramatically from the understated elegance his predecessor, Martin Margiela had been delivering. Rather than emphasizing materials and craftsmanship, Gautier shifted focus to design in a revolutionary manner. With unyielding faith in the impeccable craftsmanship of Hermes, Gautier adorned his models with the brand's iconic symbols. The Kelly lock was artistically added to trench coats and Baldock ribbon decorated dresses. In contrast to Margiela, Gautier fearlessly showcased bags on the Hermes runway. With the very first show, he debuted both his iconic JPG shoulder birkin and the renowned Kelly pochette that has been a fixture in each Hermes line since then. He also introduced the 25cm birkin, which has since become the most sought-after size. Soon enough, audiences were wowed by other classic styles like the Meda Clutch and Lindy. As Jean-Paul Gaultier's reign continued, his designs caused a shift in preference from the Kelly long to the Kelly cut an iconic silhouette that remains popular today. Gautier's gypsy bag is a timeless piece that has been beloved for decades. When it first debuted, the design was only available in unique materials like suede and nubuck. It was later released in leather and made available globally. Jean-Paul Gautier announced his retirement after a highly prolific, decades-long career in fashion. The 67-year-old French designer took to Twitter and Instagram to reveal that his 2028 couture presentation would be his last. The show celebrated 50 years of the industry's, unfan terrible. A term Gautier had become known as, which refers to his unconventional designs and approach. Gautier's retirement has detracted nothing from his immeasurable influence, he is so very loved for his provocative style and fearlessness in subverting industry norms. Over 40 years later, Jean-Paul Gaultier has established himself as a true trailblazer with his own inimitable signatures. Whether it be Breton stripes, tattoo prints, iconic Hermes bags, lingerie, and corsets as outerwear or men in skirts. You just know Gaultier when you see it. His philosophy is built on encouraging people to open their eyes and find beauty where you normally don't expect it. He has dedicated himself to his view of unrefined, uncompromised creativity, and his specific brand of artistry has never swayed from his true north, his values, and his inclusive worldview. He did diversity before it was cool, and has always put craft, unique beauty, and creative brilliance first. And that's how Jean-Paul Gaultier changed fashion. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to comment, like and subscribe.